Hi everyone and welcome to the first video of the Raised Modeling channel. Today I will be showing you the process of building my Tamiya 148 scale P47D Thunderbolt Razorback. Over here I've just looked at the various sprues that come with the kit. Everything looks to be of great quality. There is basically no flash and the clear parts look great. Over here I'm looking at the decal sheet. Everything looks to be of great detail, everything looks crisp and clean, although Tamiya decals are not known to be the greatest, as they are rather thick and fragile. I end up making do, however. The instructions are also clear, very precise, very easy to understand. There were no issues in this part of the build. The paint scheme I have chosen for this build uses Tamiya's olive drab and light grey, as can be seen over here. As with any build, the first step is to remove the pieces from the sprue. After this, I like to use my hobby knife to just clear off some of the excess plastic from taking it off the sprue. I like starting with the cockpit usually. Over here, I painted a mix of olive drab and a little bit of dark green to create this color. I then used some silver paint to simulate scratches. I then proceeded to paint the rest of the cockpit using that same olive drab and dark green mix. After this, I proceeded with a little bit of detail painting. This is where I began the detail painting process by just using a slightly thinned out black paint and going over the parts of the cockpit that need to be painted in said colour. This is after painting most of the details in black. I also dry brushed a little bit of silver to, to help highlight the details. I then put a little bit of red on a toothpick to get the precise buttons. This can be seen here. After that, I proceeded to use Tamiya's brown panel line accent color and basically filled most of the cockpit in and wiped the excess with enamel thinner. The result can be seen here. This is how the cockpit was looking before the instrument panel and the seat installation. And here is the cockpit after putting in the seat and the control stick. I then proceeded to paint the instrument panel. I simply used Tamiya's flat black acrylic paint and then proceeded to apply the instrument panel decal. The result can be seen here. This was the finished result of the cockpit. I really like how it came out and I think it's the best cockpit I've done so far. Next up was starting on the fuselage. I painted that same cockpit colour around the cockpit area of the fuselage. I did this on both sides and then I combined the two fuselage halves together. As you can also see, I painted a chromate yellow colour near the wheel wells as well as where the engine will go. I then got started on the mighty radial engine. I primed the whole thing in black and then dry brushed silver on top of it to highlight the details. After that, I painted the custom wires I did in a light brown color. Then I painted that zinc chromate yellow from earlier in the wheel wells and combined the wing halves together. It can be seen here after being attached to the fuselage. This was the result of the engine after completion and being installed onto the fuselage. I then painted that same synchromate yellow onto the inside of the gear doors for later. Then it was time to mask the canopy. I did this by holding a torch under the canopy and then tracing it out with my hobby knife. I then used a putty to fill the wheel wells and begin painting. I primed the entire model using Mr. Hobby's Surfacer 1500 in black. Here 
here you can see the process of me getting a nice even finish across the entire model. This was my first time using this primer and I highly recommend it. After that I decided to start pre-shedding using a new technique for me where I model the inside of the panels to allow for greater tonal variation later. This process does not have to be precise and a somewhat random look works well as well. Here you can see me doing some more. This was the final look of the pre-shading over the model. I then began with the main painting process. I recommend multiple thin light coats so you can control the tonal variation from the pre-shading that we did earlier. After I finished with the light grey coat at the bottom of the aircraft, I began with the olive drab coat on top. I didn't feel like any masking was necessary for this. Here you can see me finishing up the olive drab of the top of the model. As you can see throughout various parts of the model, the tonal variation from the pre-shading technique used is quite visible. Once finishing the olive drab top coat, I masked off the nose section to be painted in red as this is part of the color scheme that I selected. After painting the necessary parts in red, I began covering the entire model with Tamiya's X22 Gloss Clear. Once the entire model was covered in the gloss coat, it was time to start with the decals. What I first do is soak the decal in warm water and then apply mist to mark to the area where it needs to go. I then apply the decal to where it needs to be and wipe out the excess with a cotton swab. I then apply more mist to mark over the top. You can see some of the progress here. It was then time to get started on the propeller. I primed the propeller in black and then painted the tips using Tamiya's yellow acrylic. I also painted the spinner in the same red we used for the cowling on the model. Once the yellow tips of the propeller dried, I masked them off and proceeded to paint the rest of the propeller using a flat black. Unfortunately, I forgot to record the finishing steps to the model. All I did was paint and apply decals to the ornament in the same way I did in the model, and then use some panel line accent color and oils to weather the model. The finished result will be seen now. I hope you enjoyed the video.